Well, Emma, just in finishing, I just wanted to touch on, I know last year was a big year for you with your daughter, yeah. Mila, yeah. who was diagnosed with Hodgkin's, Hodgkin's lymphoma. That's right. Yep. Yeah. Had to go through chemo. Yeah. She's, she's, she's great now. Yeah. Bella Health, yeah, Bella Health, yeah, yeah. which she's is fantastic. And in the midst of all of that, you're traveling overseas, you're, you're running a business, you're building a business globally. How do you manage just, you know, the, the conflicting pressures I'm assuming you feel at times and just sense of, you know, different things that you're, you're excited and passionate about and care about. How do you reconcile yourself with when you're over in Africa with, with Richard Branson and the Entrepreneur Institute he has there, or you're in the US building up Business Chicks, which is going to launch in a few months' time, which is really exciting. And then just, you know, on the home front, the kids and, and who, not being there when you'd like to be there at times. How do you just deal with that? Because I know a lot of women, myself included, struggle with this pull all the time that often men don't. Mm. Um, not saying all men, but just many don't. How, sure. do you, how, do you handle, how do you manage that? I think the biggest lesson in parenting, and I'm by no means a parenting expert. I, <laughs> I've got no idea what I'm doing 99% of the time. But the biggest advice I got when I first had Miller, who was my first born, you know, as much as we look, we hold our babies in our arms and we look into their eyes and we say, you know, I wonder what you're going to make of yourself. I wonder what you're going to get up to in life. Your kids are looking at you and thinking the same thing. You know, what, what are mum and dad going to get up to? What yeah. are, you know, what's their mark? What's their legacy? I mean, they, they may not have the words for it, but they want us to get up to something as well. So yeah. I, I rarely feel guilty. You know, I, I feel a sense every now and then of, ah, oh, wouldn't it be nice if I, you know, had, had more time to do, to spend with them. Uh, but I, I, I got very, very clear in the very early days of, of parenting that I want to be a role model, particularly because I have three girls and I want to get up to something. I want to live this great big yeah. life. I want, I want to make them proud of me. And when I first had my first baby, a lot of people said to me, oh, you're going to want to stay home and you're not going to be... You know, you're not going to be as... I um, have people say that Yeah, too. but it had the opposite effect on me. I was <laughs> more motivated to create this life yeah. for my family. You know, you have these little souls you're responsible for and it just, my motivation, ambition just went boom, you know, yeah. almost linear, almost yeah. just... Well, talking of Simon Sinek, your big why. Right, yeah, You know, what, what's my life going to stand for? Yeah, and, and, and I'm really clear on that. It's about, you know, if I can create this big life and encourage and inspire others to believe it's possible for them, yeah. then, you know, I've done my work. You are such a great role model. And I know, I, I remember myself thinking years ago, how can I tell my kids, I mean, I have three sons and one daughter, but how can I tell my kids, go out there and pursue your dreams and live passionately and boldly if I'm not? Right. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, but I won't do mine because I'm raising you. <laughs> yeah. So I, I, and it is, I mean, there's obviously a balancing act and we can't always sure. do everything at 100%. But, mm. but I think that, you know, I, when someone once said to me, kids don't always listen to what you say, but they always mm. watch what you do. 100%. And, 100%. and who you are as a role model. Yeah. And I think you, you do that beautifully. So mm, thank, thank you. you for your time.